A warning that the contents of this next story may be triggering or disturbing for some people. RCMP confirms that it is investigating hazing allegations involving a hockey team in Manitoba. The Prairie Spirit School Division says it is aware of the allegations and an internal investigation has occurred. It is not clear what the nature of the hazing allegations are. Hazing used to be commonplace and while our society has worked to stamp it out, it's still happening. Laura Robinson is an investigative sports journalist who wrote the book Crossing the Line. It's about abuse in sports. Good morning, Laura. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. How common is hazing in the 21st century? Well, in the 21st century, I think, you know, as we rolled into it, it was very common. Uh, But because of some high-profile cases, uh, various hockey associations and other sport organizations, but, you know, we found it a lot in hockey and in football, uh, banned it. Uh, But that often led to it going underground because, the reason for hazing, which is sort of to, um, you know, to keep a dark secret, the, the, the team bonding is through secrecy, that really, the culture that made that uh, possible, that didn't change. So we still, I think, do find hazing, but as I said, it's it's gone underground. Now, folks might be familiar with the word hazing and the idea of it, but not know what it looks like. How would you describe hazing as an act? Well, it's an initiation. It's usually done in secret, uh, often in a locker room or in a garage or somewhere where other people can't get in. And it almost always involves copious amounts of alcohol. So that acts as an external disinhibitor. Uh, And in both ways, you you get the people doing the terrible acts. So these are little games that the new players the rookies are supposed to play they're not games they're usually sexual assaults they're degrading violent and humiliating Uh, but uh, people use a lot of alcohol first of all to uh, disable their victims uh, but also to be able to say I was drunk because they know what they're going to do is not acceptable and it's often criminal what would you say the impact of hazing is well, like any style of abuse or harassment, it's lifelong, uh, especially when it comes from people you trusted. These are people who the victim looked up to. They probably spent years wanting to make this team and then finally made it. But making the team wasn't enough. They still had to, you know, keep this deep, dark secret with the team. And that secret inside themselves, they carry it forever. How hard is it for victims of hazing to come forward? I think it's still difficult because the culture of sport is so, uh, I, I think Irving Goffman would call it a, uh, um, a mo- well, not, it's a total institution. So it, it's almost like there's a dome over it. And then because teams travel, it's a mobile total institution. So no matter where this person is, they're, they're part of the team, and the team is watching them. So they know that they're going to be seen as a traitor if they disclose what happened in hazing. And as I said earlier, they wanted to make this team for so long, uh, and this team has turned out to be the abusers of their life. Uh, it's also very difficult for them to even come to terms with what has happened. Now, now this story is based around a hockey team in Manitoba. Um, does hazing happen primarily in hockey, or does it extend to other sports? I think it extends, as I said, we all find it in, in football teams. Uh, you find it in fraternities. And unfortunately, even some women's teams have decided that equality means being as much of a jerk as a guy. Instead of bringing their culture, which I think I was a female athlete for many, many years. Uh, it was very, to me, it was inclusive. We were competitors with each other, but we still really liked each other and we were friends. Uh, instead of bringing those, uh, that culture to sport, it looks like sometimes women's sport has adopted this male culture. It's very toxic, obviously. So, uh, out 
outside of hockey and football and fraternities, I do I do know of uh, a few varsity teams, volleyball and basketball, where hazings have occurred too. Uh, but you'll find it more frequently uh, in aggressive male sports where violence is seen as a form of masculinity. We have just about a minute left here, Laura. Um, for any parents who are listening and may be concerned about this, how can they talk to their kids about hazing? Well, I think they have to really, well, first of all, do some research on it so they know that they're probably going to talk about sexual abuse by a teammate. Uh, and they have to understand that that's a criminal offense. So no one wants their child to be subjected to a crime. Uh, so the parents become educated themselves on what it is, and then there really needs to be a, an environment in the house household that that uh, is about honesty and about unconditional love. So uh, a child feels that they can go to the parent. And one one big problem for children, young people, is that that many um, many families turn themselves inside out in order to accommodate the cost and the schedule of sports these days. So the child does not want to disappoint the parents after they've sacrificed so much. Laura, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Laura Robinson is an investigative sports journalist. An RCMP spokesperson said the incident was alleged to have happened in Winnipeg and was reported to Pemina Valley RCMP on February 20th in Carmen. The statement from Prairie Spirit School Division says, quote, For the sake of privacy for the students and families involved, the school divisions will not be commenting on any student's potential involvement. We continue to work as education partners in order to best support the students and families involved, end quote. For more on this story, you can go to cbc.ca slash Manitoba. Thank you for watching the CBC Manitoba YouTube channel and don't forget to like and subscribe. For the latest breaking news and top stories, download the CBC News app.